Okay. The day of our Lord Jesus Christ, except there come a falling away first. Okay, that has to happen first, and the man of sin be revealed. That has to happen first, before Jesus comes back. Because you remember in Re the end of Revelations, when Jesus comes back, he kills the Antichrist with the sword of his mouth. And the man of sin be revealed. Uh, here's another thing. Uh, it says the dead in Christ shall rise first. Well, it's not until the book of Revelation, uh, the end of the book of Revelations, where the dead are raised. Uh, it says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither receive his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. This is the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. So if the dead in Christ rise first, and then we which are alive and remain, that's everybody. So when are the dead raised? When did the dead in Christ raise? At the end of Revelations. The same as what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24. Okay, and then there's a... Uh, here a lot of people like to use this one. Luke chapter 21, verse 36. Let's put this in the King James Plus because it'll show the Greek and Hebrew meaning. 21.36 Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape. Okay, a lot of people get this wrong. The word escape. Um... The word escape is ekfugo. It's a Greek word, and it means to flee out, escape, flee. It means to run away. Right here, run away, literally or figurative, by implication, to shun. Now, these that are italicized, uh, they're analogies. They're not actually the definition. And An analogy is can use two different subjects to try to get a point across but they don't actually have the same meaning. By analogy, to vanish, okay? It doesn't mean literally to vanish, and that's certainly not the definition because it's an it's italicized. So it's trying to uh, try to explain it a different way. So let's look up other examples of what this Greek word has been used in the Bible. Flee. Okay. Ekfugo is uh, the word we're looking for. Let's see what, taking it down to the root, let's see. Okay, here it is. Ekfugo. Uh, to run away, same, or by implication to shun. Okay, let's see. But when they persecute you in this city, vanish ye into another? No. Flee into another. Run away. Doesn't mean to disappear literally. That was given as an analogy. The the actual meaning is is to turn away. In other words, repent. Repent. So when it says pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape, it means to flee these things that shall come to pass because temptations and destructions from on high are going to be let loose and only those who are praying always and dying to themselves are going to be able to escape these traps and snares that are going to be poured out on the earth and 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 that's the that's the judgment of God because only those who really love God are the ones who are going to be able to to uh, overcome it's no disappearing trick there is no disappearing trick in the Bible uh, the verse that everybody likes to use as the rapture thing, rapture theory. Let's see here. Uh, First Thessalonians 4.17 For the Lord himself, okay, himself, that ought to tell you, uh, every eye shall see him. And it's going to be himself. 
shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain. That's everybody. That's Jew and Gentile alike. That's everybody. We which are alive and remain. Everybody. Shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. To meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Okay, for one thing, too, this word air, it means to breathe. Uh... It also, the other form of it is uh, spirit. Because you look up spirit and it means to breathe to, to aspire by analogy. And that's where we meet the Lord. We're not, these, the heavens are going to be burned up with fire like it says in the book of Peter. The elements shall melt with fervent heat and the heavens being on fire. Uh, there ain't going to be no clouds to stand on. So, the clouds that Jesus is talking about will take a deep, deeper understanding and a search to know what he was saying. But it has nothing to do with us physically standing on the clouds in the air because, for one thing, the heaven above us is the same below us on the other side of the earth. And when God changes everything, he's going to create a new heavens and a new earth. Okay? Okay? So, there, there needs to be a little bit of discernment. Another thing, it says, uh, the trump. Well, also too, in I believe it's Corinthians, it says, at the last trump. Okay, well, when does the last trump happen? It's at the end of the revelations. Just like Jesus said, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. I mean, you can find this over, it repeats itself over and over and over, and he tells you he's not hiding it. He said after the tribulation. And it's not going to be some disappearing trick. You need, we need to get into a study where the words caught up what they actually entail. Because when Paul spoke about being caught up to the third heaven, he said whether in the body or out of the body. That means... It wasn't some disappearing trick. Uh, Paul died daily to himself. And there is an operation of God. We go through the baptisms of Christ to enter into these resurrections. There is a doctrine of baptisms. It talks about that in Hebrews chapter 6. Oh, and another thing that the scripture about not appointed to wrath. Well, we're not appointed to wrath. Well, Noah went through the wrath poured out on the earth, but was sealed. Lot went through the the fire and brimstone that was poured out on uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and went through it. Uh, he went to a small town first, but then he got afraid, and then he went up to the mountain where God told him to go first. And then the children of Israel, they went through the wrath poured out on Egypt. The frogs, the, the pestilence, pestilences, uh, death passing uh, over their camp, over their doors. Yeah, they went through the wrath of God. And because it says not appointed to wrath, you think automatically it has to deal with the tribulation. And to be honest, it has to deal more with the lake of fire. Because all they that don't overcome are not going to be a part of the first resurrection. There ain't going to be no escape route. There ain't going to be no rapture to take you out of here. That's the judgment. The judgment is the separation of the wheat and the chaff. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast. Okay, this is another thing. These saints are killed by the beast for the witness of Jesus? That's during the tribulation. Okay, and then it says, Neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first 
resurrection. Okay, if that is the first resurrection, when the dead in Christ rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Okay, this is the first resurrection. Chapter 20, verse 5, it says, right above this, and he cast him in the bottomless pit. Who? The, the dragon, the devil. Then there's the thousand year reign. I mean, I could keep going and going and going. Uh, we do go through the tribulation. But it's those who are sealed by God that are protected. In the end, there's going to be many that die. But there is nowhere in the Bible that says, Oh, you disappear before the tribulation. No, it doesn't say that. This is how he knows who really love his truth and the word of God. They're not going to make up lies. They're going to love the truth. I mean, there's a bunch of other verses, and, and if I could keep on going, uh, they'd come to my remembrance, and we could clear them up. Oh, the two shall be in one field, the other shall be taken the other left. Okay, let's, let's go to that. Uh, let's clear this up. Twenty-four forty. There's one of them. Okay. Then shall two be in the field, and the one shall be taken. By what? Okay. Let's go right above it, because it tells you. It tells you what they're taken by. But as in the days of Noah shall, so also the coming of the Son of Man be. This is right above it. For as in the days of Noah that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the heart into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them took them all away so shall also the coming of the son of man be then two shall be in the field the one shall be taken and the other left alive two shall be grinding at the mill the one shall be taken by what the floods and the other left alive watch therefore for you know not what hour your lord doth come because what does he come like Jesus comes like a thief in the night. What does a thief come? Kill, steal, and destroy. Who does he come? What does he come with? The fire of his consuming mouth. Who does he destroy first? The wicked. That's right.